Now, it's going to be quite a simplistic treatment, but looking at the past papers, this seems to be essentially the minimum you need to know to be able to regurgitate. There are certain set phrases that we'll go through because the IB likes their set phrases. So I've got some water, some blue water there in a beaker, and it's surrounded by air represented by the white diamonds. And so the water's going to slowly evaporate. As long as it's above its uh, freezing point, it'll be a liquid, and if it's a liquid, it's going to slowly evaporate. Yes, I know solids evaporate too. That's okay. Now, as the water evaporates, it's going to bounce around in the air and it's going to slowly move up through that column of air. It has to break free of its own surface tension, of course, but the pressure of the water that's now in the air is its vapour pressure. If I was to heat the water up, what's going to happen is more and more water is going to evaporate faster and faster into the air and the vapour pressure of the water in the air is going to increase as you heat the water. Then something clever happens. As the water temperature increases, the vapour pressure increases until you get to when it boils. Now when it's boiling, that's different to evaporating. There's bubbles coming off and you've reached, for the case of water, 100 degrees centigrade. And here's the bit they want you to know. Is that a liquid will boil when its vapour pressure equals atmospheric pressure. So the green pressure there is vapour pressure. And so 100 degrees C, one atmosphere vapour pressure, and one atmosphere atmospheric pressure, you're going to get boiling. Let's have a look at a, a slightly different example. I'm going to take my water now to the top of Mount Everest. And at the top of Everest, the air pressure is only a third as much as it is at sea level. It's taken me a while. Fantastic. So now there's less air. So even the smallest bit of heat now is going to drive a lot more of those water molecules to evaporate. And the vapor pressure is going to go up a lot quicker than you'd expect because the air isn't keeping the water molecules down as much as it did before. And it's going to boil a lot easier. Actually, it boils at about 71 degrees centigrade. So at 71 degrees centigrade, that's the boiling point of water at the top of Everest. Because at the top of Everest, the atmospheric pressure is a third of an atmosphere. And so when the vapour pressure of the water reaches a third of an atmosphere, that's atmospheric pressure, it's a third of an atmosphere. And so that's why they have special cookbooks for high altitude. May I recommend bacon at high altitude? Ha! My wife's bread maker's just finished. And then we're not at high altitude, we're on the river. Jeez, can you diffuse that? Smashing. Uh, so conversely, if you were to bake, let's say at the bottom of a, of a very deep well, the air pressure would be much higher, let's say 1.2 atmospheres of air pressure. So water wouldn't boil at 100 degrees. You'd have to have even more energy given to the water to get it to boil. Maybe it would be 100 and 120 degrees to boil at the bottom of a very deep well. That is, of course, the principle of a pressure cooker, which is in another video, the one you just watched probably.